Hello, hello. I'll wait a minute and see if anybody comes on here. Just depends on if the notifications are working today. Oh, hi, Dan. How are you? I love your art. You should really do some more videos of your art. Hi, Deathfid. Hey, Cal. So today I kind of wanted to talk about um, strokes and young people having strokes because of I've seen a lot of articles this week with um, Luke Perry, and I'm sure you guys all have heard, you know, Luke Perry, actor from 90210 and stuff like that. He passed away this week at 52 from a major stroke. And a lot of people have said, oh, 52, so young for a stroke. Um, I had my first stroke at 25. So less than half his age, I had my first stroke. So young people can definitely have strokes. Yes, rest in peace to Dylan McKay. Uh, I actually, I watched 90210 when it was um, out. I watched it a lot, actually. And uh, he was kind of my uh, first celebrity crush or first crush, you know. I'm, I'm 90s or I'm an 80s kid, but in the 90s, I watched that. So um, I did look it up on Hulu and um, they have all of 90210. Here, let me open the blind a little, just a second. And hopefully we'll get rid of that glare on my glasses. But um, so, yeah, uh, on Hulu, they have all of 90210. And looking back, if you now I've watched a couple episodes the other day. Uh, oh, my God, the fashion on there and everything. And I thought that school, that show was so cool. And now looking back, it's quite funny, all the mullets and stuff. Um, but welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody that's coming in. Hunting and stuff with J&J, Backcountry Bunghole, Robert Burke. Uh, my father in law Backcountry Bunghole says my father-in-law has had two mini strokes in the last year. Yeah, I've had um, four or five mini strokes, and I've had two major strokes. So I was going to kind of talk today about... Um, we're going to, uh, do you guys know the signs and symptoms of a stroke? So like the signs and symptoms of a stroke and, you know, keep in mind, it's not an old pe person thing. The time I had a stroke, I, I was a nursing assistant. So I knew the signs and symptoms of a stroke, but I didn't recognize it in myself because I was 25. I thought, oh, no, 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 I'm not having a stroke. But yeah, it can happen to anybody. So I just kind of want everyone to know the signs and symptoms. And a lot of um, doctors will say FAST, F-A-S-T. And those are the signs and symptoms of a stroke. F being face. If your face has some droopage on either side, a great way to see if you have um, face droopage or to have the person smile, see if both sides of their face goes up. When I smiled after my stroke, one side went up and one side did not. Have them raise their eyebrows. When I had my stroke, one side of my, one eyebrow went up and one did not go up. So those are some good, good examples to be able to see a sign of a stroke is have them smile, have them raise their eyebrows, or have them stick their tongue out because it's very interesting. After my stroke, when I stuck my tongue out, because only half those muscles were working, I stuck my tongue out at a weird, it didn't go straight out. So you can have the person just stick their tongue out straight. If they cannot stick their tongue out straight and it goes weird off to one side, that's a sign of a stroke. So those are face signs of a stroke. And so that would be the F in fast. The other sign of a stroke would be the A is arm weakness. So how they would have me check on my arm weakness is you would have the person put both their arms out in front of them and see if they can bring both arms up at the same time and evenly both arms. That's a great sign and sim or a sign of a stroke if they cannot bring one of their arms up equally to where how they can bring the other arm up. 
And then, of course, their speech. If their speech is off. My speech was very off. I knew what I was trying to say, but I could not get it out. Basic little words. I just couldn't articulate and get them out. You, if their speech is off. So that's F-A-S. And then the last one, T, that would be for time to call. If some of these symptoms are very obvious, if they have this, then it's time to call. Because the time to get a person in for a stroke is within three hours of the symptoms. You want to make sure to get the person in. So my first stroke, I didn't get there the first, in, within three hours. I could not get the drug TPA, the clot, clot busting drugs that you have to have within three hours of your stroke. My second stroke, I was in the hospital when I had the stroke. So immediately they got me the medicine and they recognized I was having a stroke. So very, very important that time is of the essence. If somebody is having a stroke, you call 911 immediately. And during a stroke, you lose 32,000 brain cells a second. So the minute you get them the clot busting, busting drug, TPA, they can, you know, be hopefully, you know, busting up that clot and not be losing as many brain cells because you do lose 32,000 brain cells a second during a stroke. So, but welcome H7. And, uh, oh yeah, of course, Cal, I want to get this out here. And, you know, it kind of brings it to our attention because of Luke Perry dying. And I'm just seeing so many articles out there. Oh, he was too young, too young. No, no, there are young people having strokes all over. Lots of young people having strokes. He was 52, which 52 is up there, but I was 25. There are five-year-olds, 10-year-olds having strokes. So I just want people to be aware how to see if the signs and symptoms of a stroke. But some of the best ones are the eyebrows and the smile. It's very obvious with that. So I thought I would share the story of the day I had the stroke. Do you guys want to hear about when I had my stroke? And, you know, I don't share this story for sympathy, for you guys to feel sorry for me. I, sh I want to share this because of for awareness. So people know, you know, these things happen. People can know the signs and symptoms. And people can know that, you know, you can recover. And this is what you can do to try to help yourself along in recovery of a stroke. So um, just know that I'm not talking about my stroke for any sort of um, sympathy or anything like that. But um, so, you know, mind you, I was 25. I was very healthy. I was not really many problems. Um, so I had just had a baby a few months before that. So I had a new child. I didn't know, like, was my body feeling weird because of that? Or was it, you know, because of uh, I was something was going on. So I had had the worst headache of my life for about three days. I had had this horrid headache, this horrid, horrid headache. But I was going to take it was early morning and I decided to take my husband um, lunch at work. So I got his lunch together and I was just feeling weird. Honestly, the best I can describe, like the face and everything, because it started in my face and it went to my whole left side. But um, it, it felt like I'd been to the dentist. Total numb, you know, like couldn't feel it. Felt like I'd been to the dentist, but I had not been to the dentist. And um, so I go to leave the house and I'm going to take my, Mike, my husband, um, lunch at work. And so I get on the freeway and I have a stick shift. And I'm, I'm just feeling real weird, real funny, but not really noticing symptoms too much. And um, I go to merge from one uh, freeway onto a different freeway. And I'm on the on-ramp to get onto that next freeway. And I have a stick shift. So this was left-sided weakness. When I went to pick up my left foot to put in the clutch for to get there, I was having a real hard time, you know, and not, I was not doing the gears right. And I was having a hard time pushing the clutch, but I managed to get to my husband's work. 
he, I, I said, Hey, look, look at this. And, you know, my face was major drooping by then. I mean, it was getting to be obvious. So he, um, we went ahead and we drove to the hospital. We got to the hospital and one of the things that they did that they were like, it was very interesting, but they took out an actual safety pin and the doctor started poking my face with the safety pin. Poke, poke, poke. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel any of it. But by then my left side, completely the arm, every the leg was starting to go. I was losing my ability to walk. And so, you know, they were doing CAT scans. They were doing all this stuff. And um, I was in the hospital for um, just under a month, so like two days under a month. And they did a lot of testing. I had a EKG, a transesophageal EKG, where they go in, I'll put you out and go in and look behind your heart and do the EKG. I had a whole, um, bunch of genetic testing done. Um, but um, I was there for about a month. I could not, um, I couldn't swallow. I had to go all, all this speech therapy to learn how to swallow again. I couldn't walk. I couldn't move my left side. I couldn't um, blink. My eye was like permanently, not like all the way open, but just partially open. And I'd use um, an eye patch to not dry out my eye. Um, and that was for about a month. We didn't know why, what had, ha why I had the stroke. And then we did end up with the genetic testing came back. And I do have a um, genetic uh, blood uh, mutation. And so I have the Jack 2 mutation. And so that's just something I will always have to live with. And I have essential thrombocytosis. So I create, we have platelets. We have white blood cells, red blood cells, and you have platelets. That's what your blood is made out of. And my platelets, your platelets should be about 200 to 300,000 is a normal platelet level for you guys probably have about that. I create about 1.2 million platelets. And not only do I create a ton of platelets, and platelets are what clot your blood. I create way too many platelets, and my platelets are different shaped, so easily stick together and clot. And so um, now I just have to be on um, blood thinners uh, when it gets really out of control, aspirin, and um, so a few medications. And then I, um, so that was the first stroke. I had lost my medical after that, did not have medical for a couple of years and let it get out of control. Um, another thing that kind of runs along with it is I have no iron, like no iron. And um, I have to go about every year and get infusions of iron. Well, I didn't know this at that time. And I let it get out of control. And the Jack 2 mutation can actually then mutate if you let it get out of control and let your platelets go for a long term out of control. Um, can turn into leukemia, but it is the chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And it's, um, you know, when you hear leukemia, that's scary. That's a scary word, but it's, um, it's, they say the best type of cancer you can get. And I've heard that many times and it has a stage zero. So as long as we keep track of my blood work and keep track of my platelets and my iron and keep me into good levels, then I'm just in stage zero. So yes, I also have that, but it's, it's, that it sounds much scarier than it is. It's not a big deal. Hey, well, uh, welcome. Welcome. I was just going through the story of, um, my first stroke and uh, all about having the stroke. You no, don't wish for a stroke. That's a horrible thing to say as somebody that's had it. It's, it's because my mind was still pretty much here. I could not say how I felt. I could not tell the doctors anything. So it's really hard because you're, you're still with it, but you can't articulate and say what you want to say. And that I don't, I do not wish that on anybody. Um, yeah, I've had two major ones and four or five mini strokes, but, um, so, uh, yeah, that's how I had my first stroke and, um, I couldn't walk. I couldn't, uh, I had to teach myself how to walk again. I had to teach myself how to talk. Um, it's very frustrating. It is the most frustrating thing ever. Um, your stepmom had one cow. Yeah, it's, it's way hard. Um, Hey, artful yours, um, with Diana. I was in your uh, um, stream a little bit ago. Awesome. You got it up and going and your art is gorgeous. Your art is beautiful. 
But um, yeah, uh, so that's my first stroke. And unfortunately, I did not take care of myself. I, did, I lost my medical and stuff. And so then later, um, I did have a second stroke. But um, I had had a hernia surgery. And right, I mean, within like a half hour after the surgery, that's when I had my second stroke. So um, I was in the hospital for the second stroke. I was still in the hospital. And um, they were able to get me TPA, the clot busting drug. So um, I walked away from that one. I mean, a couple of days in intensive care and it was, it was a major deal, but it wasn't quite as big a deal as the first stroke because I did not recognize the signs and symptoms. And so that's why I really, really wanted to get it out there that, I mean, even 25 year olds can have strokes. So please just recognize the signs and symptoms of a stroke. And then after this live is over, I'm going to end the description. I will be putting the, um, what I had talked about, the signs and symptoms and some of the ways you can recognize a stroke for those that are just coming in. I will put that in the description and this will be posted so you can go back and watch. But I just really want everyone to really, you know, be able to recognize um, a stroke when it's happening. And then I also do want to mention, this is the majority of strokes, how they um, present themselves. Now, I have met a few people that they presented as uh, their stroke presented as like the flu, throwing up, dizziness, um, couldn't stand um, more of like um, nausea and stuff. So strokes can present themselves, you know, different ways, but the majority of strokes present themselves in facial weakness, speech, um, arm weakness, being able to raise your arms at the same time. So um, yeah, those are the majority of strokes, but not always. So I mean, be aware of that as well. But all right. So I, I just wanted to kind of get through that and kind of talk about, you know, you know, it's not always obvious when a young person's having a stroke, you know, and, and the headache, uh, the worst headache of your life is another huge sign. They said when I had that headache, I should have gone to the doctor, but I was a new mom and thought maybe um, some reason uh, I was exhausted. I'd been up all night, you know, with the baby and stuff. So, but uh, both of your parents had major strokes, uh, really changed them. Um, yeah. And, uh, the older people are, you know, they don't recover. They don't tend to recover as well. I was 25. So I did, um, recover quite a little bit better because I, um, you know, your young people can, but, um, yeah, cows, more and more people, young people are having them nowadays. Yes. Um, they did attribute to mine. So I have that a mutation in my blood and I have essential thrombocytosis, which is a blood clotting condition. But also I had been on birth control for the first time in my life. I had never been on birth control, but um, I had, you know, just had a baby. So I didn't want to have another one right away. So I was on birth control for the very first time of my life and um, the birth control. But if we would have known I had a clotting condition, then they would have put me on different birth controls or something. So unfortunately, um, there's a lot of young girls, young people that are um, having strokes because of birth controls. Uh, thankfully, they have taken a couple of uh, the one major one that did that off the market. And um, so there are medications that have caused strokes, there are um, energy drinks. I mean, there are young people having strokes and underlying heart conditions, underlying conditions that they just had no clue that they had. So um, yeah, young people can have strokes. Now they have not um, posted because I was looking it up trying to kind of because I wanted to be able to tell you what type of stroke uh, Luke Perry had. Um, they've been kind of hush hush. I cannot find anything of um, what type of stroke he had, but I mean, 52 and he, I mean, look at him. He looks pretty healthy. He looked like I had never heard mention of any health conditions. So it can happen to anybody really. So just be aware of the signs of strokes. But did I miss anything else? And how are you guys doing today? How is everyone doing?
I got to remember the delay. I sometimes ask, how are you doing? And I get back talking. So I want to, I want to hear how you guys are doing. I'll remember that delay. Oh, Willow's still sick. Yeah, that's terrible. I hope she feels better. That's no fun. It's no fun. And it's hard on mommy and daddy when the little one's sick too, because often they can't tell you what exactly is wrong if they could just communicate and tell you, you know, exactly where she's not feeling good. But I hope she feels better. Oh, H7, you got your car fixed. That's awesome. And for free, that's always nice. On a sunny day, you can go out and check it out. That's always good. Yeah, I hate it when the little ones are sick. But... Hey, last dog. You're just now coming in. I um shared the story of when I had my stroke and I talked about the signs and symptoms of strokes and stuff. Um, just because I want people to be aware. I mean, kind of it brings it up because of Luke Perry, you know, dying of a stroke and he's 52 and stuff. So yeah, that's what we've been talking about. But how are you doing? And artful yours with Diana. She just did her first live stream a little bit ago. Awesome, awesome. She's an amazing artist. And the dog pound, he's a great friend. He does live streams most evenings. Do you have a set schedule? I haven't caught on to the schedule yet, I guess. Uh, lost dog. All right. Well, I'll say lost dog, but it's the dog pound is who I'm talking to. <laughs> Mike's better half. Hey, don't say that. He's, he's listening. He sees you say that. You're going to give him a big head. <laughs> Excuse me. See, see, I told you. <laughs> 420 and 830 ish most days. And you are um, central time zone. I think you're about two hours difference than me, aren't you? Because I'm in Pacific uh, time zone. So um, I do. I'm trying to stay on a set schedule. I go live. I was a little late today. I got a phone call. But um, 11 o'clock uh, every uh, Thursday. And I am thinking about doing um, on Tuesdays, uh, 11 o'clock as well, uh, Pacific Standard Time, uh, because I think I'm going to do maybe a Trivia Tuesday. I think Trivia Tuesday would be really fun. I got these um, 90s trivia cards. So I thought on Tuesday we could do like 90s trivia. I thought that would be fun. But um, And I might add some other days because I need to... Um, I want to do some lives and get um, doing art, doing lives again. That would be good. But I gotta um, get a webcam. So, so what do you got going on today, uh, Lost Dog? Oh, it was your first live stream, Diana. I totally understand. My first live stream, I um, did it on my phone. So right here, I have a crate up and then I have a tripod. And that's where I film from. And I tried to put my phone above and do art while I was doing the live stream. And my problem with my phone is it kept auto-focusing. And so it was just really bad quality. Oh, my hair looks terrible. <laughs> but um, it was really, really bad quality. And so um, my first live was the mess, too. I mean, you, you got to get the kinks out. It's not as easy as people make it look. Uh, so you did amazing for your first live. I was in there for your first one when you were having the issues. And then you went, you know, you went live later and you did amazing. So, yeah, awesome. But, yeah, I mean, my first one, and I still have issues. I mean, last week, uh, midstream, the camera quit and it wouldn't work. And I had to then get on my phone and I did like a part two type deal. But um, because when I was went to get back on the stream after it quit, it told me that um the video was in use or the camera was in use. So I mean there's all kinds of little issues all the time. It, it it's no biggie. You're not going to have one at 420. It's nap time. 
All right, so 8.30, you'll do Collins. All right. All right. I'll have to try to make that. Um, now, the Dog Pounds um, uh, show is 420 friendly, marijuana friendly. He is a medical marijuana user, so I do want to just say that because I did get a message about sending people to Causes Stream, and uh, some of these streams are 420 friendly, and if you don't, if that's not your thing, then don't go there. But I am going to let people know now, you know, who are medical mar marijuana users and who are not, because I felt really bad sending people because some I didn't send them to cause they found cause through my stream though so yeah but I mean so but yeah uh I the rest of the day I'm gonna work on my Etsy I've got a whole bunch of stuff to list on my Etsy I've got them actually right here next to me um some of the ones that I've done here recently you guys want to see how they dried and how they're all done I think that one is a mystery pour. And that one. I kind of like it that way. So I've got these all photoed. Now I just got to list them on Etsy. I really like this one. It's got some gold that I don't think is, you can't really see real well. But yeah, um, I don't know if you guys noticed, I hit 500 subscribers. So yeah, that's kind of exciting. This one. And I thought about taken and painting a couple of trees um this one almost is screaming landscape i'm not sure this way or yeah probably maybe this way um i thought about some uh trees or some deciduous trees or something and this one can't really see the details Throughout what links for so this one was kind of a um a mess up one and I videoed this whole this doing this one and then um when I went to go post the video it it was gone so every once in a while yeah my camera acts up and just eats the video for my Etsy shop. Okay, yeah, that would be great. I really want to sell some more art because uh, as soon as I sell some art, I'm buying a webcam. So uh, during my lives, you guys can watch, you know, the camera can be above and you can watch me do the art live. And the mystery pours I do, I would love to do some of those lives so you guys can see um, me do, you know, pick the, um, pick the technique and colors on a live stream. I think that would be super fun. But, um, this one I did, um, so this art's really, really hard to like replicate and to do the same one over and over again. And so um, somebody bought a, I think it was a 30 by 40 or it was a really, really big, I think 30 by 40, um, cause that's the largest one I've done. 30 by 40 painting in this. And so um, then they said, I wanna see what you can do that would match it in smaller. So I just did a variety of ones that would match it because I didn't, I, it's really hard to really match with this painting if somebody wants one that goes, you know, matches it. And so um, they bought a couple of them. And then this is the one that, because um, I bought, I made extras. I knew they weren't going to, woo, can't even speak. I knew they were not going to buy all of them. So I just made a whole bunch and I knew I could sell them. But yeah, this went with a whole series of paintings that, um, a really nice couple bought for me. Uh, and then this one, I really love this one. And this one's another hard one because this one has um, some gold shimmering through right here. And I can't really show you guys the gold very well. But um, 
what color is uh, Willow's room, Cal? What does she have a color scheme in her room? But um, the gold, black, and red color. Yeah, I like that one. That one, those uh, turn out really well. Now, um, it's really kind of weird. A different paint uh, brands will have like different golds. It's, I mean, they vary big. Gold is the well, gold and red. A certain colors. Um, will vary even like it'll be definite reds, you know, cadmium red hue. They will differ between brands, but gold's one that definitely differs. And so it was hard for me to find a gold that didn't just go all the way across and make all the colors shimmery and kind of lose itself in there, or a gold that also didn't wasn't too heavy because gold is a little bit heavier of a color. And my paintings that has to do with a lot of the density of the paint. It was hard to find a gold that just didn't float across the top or sink down and bury itself and didn't really show up. So I was quite happy with my gold. It actually is a mixture of a couple of golds. And that's how I was able to um, start making my gold, you know, show up a lot more. You know, this one, it's a nice mixture of coming, you know, coming along with floating on the top, creating lacing. And just kind of going streaks of it. So there's certain colors that you got to kind of play with. So um, people, you know, will often comment how easy it looks. And it definitely, I make it look very easy. It's all in the mixing of the paint and getting your paint consistency really um, well. And learning what uh, colors play nice with each other. But, uh Thank you. Um, I'm trying to remember your name. You told me your name the other day, your actual name, because uh, I can't say, but I'll just say UFO Builder. <laughs> I think it was Tom. Is it Tom? I don't know. But uh, so I'm trying to, I'm meeting so many great, awesome new friends, and I'm trying to remember all the uh, new, new friends' names and everybody. So forgive me if I get you mixed up. Tim, Tim. Okay. I was close, <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, H7, I had to mix a couple of golds to kind of get a happy medium where it would um, show up how I wanted it to show up and stuff. So it's kind of fun to mess around and figure out what paints play well with each other. But, um, this one was on a video. And then this one's one of my very favorite videos I've done. Oh, upside down. But uh, what was really fun about this video, I don't know if you guys know, this was a really good one. And um, I just like literally came up with it. I'm like, I bet you I could do a sunset if I layered, you know, the exact layers of these colors and together. And um, this was like out of nowhere, you know, just thinking of it and then videoed it. And so I did not practice this one at all. And I, I actually usually don't practice. Uh, maybe once or twice we'll practice. But um, a lot of these are just first time tries, uh, but I know which colors will do it, will work well together. So that was, this is one of my favorites. But yeah, um, for the new people coming in, check each other's channel out, you know, and stuff. Of course, I don't want the, the spam words in the chat and stuff, but yeah, definitely do some networking and stuff. And for those that are just coming in, I did talk about um, the stroke I had in my 20s and stuff. So young people can have strokes. I talked about Luke Perry, the actor this week that just passed away at 52 from a stroke. So if you um, want to, uh, after this is posted, you can go back and listen. Um, it's very important, the signs and symptoms of a stroke. And I do go how, through how to recognize a stroke for those that are just coming in, but um, yeah, definitely network and get to know each other. Some great channels coming in and stuff, but, um, and then some of my great friends that I've been around with for a while. Robert Burke here. Um, I think we are on a race. What are we racing to this time, Robert? No, actually, you know what? Uh, I think that, you know, I, I will have this growth and then I'll probably stall out and then you'll catch up because that's, that's what most channels do. Oh, you've had a stroke and a heart attack. Um, if you don't mind, uh, what, what age were you when you had your stroke? Um, Cause we were talking about how more and more young people are having strokes. 
take care cow, give her a big hug for me. And um, I hope she gets feeling better, but we'll talk about that clock. But, um, so you were 35. So I was 25 and 33. Well, my two, the major strokes I had. So, and then I've had many strokes in between. So there you go. Another young person. I, I find more and more and more young people having strokes. So um, it's definitely a very important to know those signs and symptoms. Oh, whatever, Robert. We're going to grow together. We have to grow together. And this growth hasn't been easy. This has been hard work. Oh, my God. I have notebooks and notebooks. So I'll go to these. Um, I guess to call them networking streams uh, is kind of the best way to explain it. So I go to these networking streams and, you know, everybody has their way of doing it and stuff. When I first started, I would be, all, I got you. I got you. I got you. You can't, you can't. So I find the ones that I um, I haven't recognized, don't recognize their channel yet. And I go check out their channel and I go watch a video, a comp, you know, watch a video through. And I really try to give them, you know, when I first started these network streams, I'll be honest, I saw gamers and different things. And I thought, oh, I'm not into that. I'm not going to check out a gamer's channel or certain channels. But, you know, I have actually checked out a few channels recently that maybe as a gamer or things that I thought, you know, hey, I'm not into that. But you know what? I'm not into the game they're playing. I'm into the person. The person that, you know, is is streaming is like, you know, not all gamers. I'm talking about just certain ones that I have found that they're freaking hilarious. And I, I want to just, you know, be in their chat, you know, talking with the others in the chat and stuff. And and so um, I am going to the videos and watching it, you know, a full video, trying to, you know, give every type of channel um, kind of uh, chance and stuff. And uh, I have found some great channels. I'm, I'm not saying every single one is, but the majority of the channels I am finding, I've got some amazing content, even if it's not something maybe I'm into. Um, their personality is pretty amazing and, you know, keeps me stay they're watching and stuff. So it's been pretty cool. I've met, met some amazing artists. There's some, you know, Diana's in here. I've met, I met quite a few new artists, crafters, homesteaders, um, the outdoors channels and um, different uh, UFO building, <laughs> but yeah, different, you know, science like channels and stuff. So I've met a lot of a huge variety of channels. So Definitely come in my live streams. You can find pretty much a little bit of anybody. And then, you know, there's the great friends that I've had uh, uh, quite a while. I mean, Cal California Riding Sherpa, Robert Burke, um, Back Backcountry Bunghole, The Dog Pound. Uh, I know there was a couple more in here, but we've been chatting and uh, getting to know each other on YouTube for months and months. So. Um, it's great. It's great to see everybody, you know, here. And thank you. Yeah, um, I definitely. Uh, and then I have family and friends that are maybe into that type of thing, gaming channel or um, different certain things that maybe I'm not quite into. I have passed the their names on to you and different channel names on to, you know, other people that maybe that might not be one for me. But I'm like, hey. You know, like um, I know one was like horror, uh, like horror genre um, type stuff, some really scary stories and um, really gory and stuff. That's right up my brother's alley. I passed that channel name on to my brother and said, hey, check out this channel. I think you would really like that one. Um, there's so many. I mean, there's such a huge variety of people in these streams that you will find many channels that are right up your alley. But um, Nike girl, she's one that does streams quite often. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks. Yeah, I do this uh, live stream every single Thursday at 11. I usually try to have a theme, like a subject to talk about for the first few minutes. And then we just kind of chat and um, get to know each other after that. But I usually do try to have a, like kind of a subject to talk about for a few minutes at least. And today's was strokes. For those that are coming in. 
Yeah, Nike girl. Um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start a second stream. Uh, next Tuesday's will be my first. I'm gonna do trivia. So next Tuesday we're gonna have '90s trivia. So uh, my streams will be two. Right now I've been doing Thursdays at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, but um, I think I'm gonna start up on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 on the West Coast time. Yeah, I was showing some of my artwork, um, and there's a video of this one, Sunset. There's this one. But I'll show some different ones for those that were already here. Uh, the other day, I did a video, because on Tuesdays, I do a tips and tricks video where it's speaking. I try to just have music in my, in short videos. But um, the other day, when I did my tips and tricks video, I did this one. And this is, I love this technique. It's always turns out really nice. It's the dip technique. So I just put paint in and dip this onto a different one. And they're almost dry. These dried really quick. And then this was the flip cup. And this is the same exact colors, just a little bit more white or a little bit less, you know, of each color. But this was the flip cup. And my sun's kind of going away. I sit right here by a window. When I first started the stream, the sun was out, but it's kind of going away. So it's not showing you the pictures like I would love it to, but Let's see if I get the cat hair off it first. Really like this one. It's um, this is copper through here. This is copper, so it's kind of got a shimmery. Oh, there you go. You can kind of pick up the shimmer. I'm very, very busy person. That's how, Diana. <laughs> you know, um, I never am bored and I'm always working, working, working. I have to actually run, you know, my Etsy shop with my art and creating art. And I'm also actually, I run a Amazon shop. Uh, I sell books on Amazon. I have over 10,000 books. And then my husband and I own our own business that we run too. So <laughs> yeah, I, um, I am always busy, 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 busy. I don't take time off, but I mean, I do things that I enjoy too. So yeah, I'm always working, 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 but when you really love what you're doing, it's, it makes it, you know, a little bit easier to do. Hey, that not me. I am so happy you showed up because you didn't show up last week. And um, I know that I, the first week I put the, um, what's it called? The night bot on. Oh my God, that horrible night bot was like, Taking out everybody's comments. If you just put an emoji, if you just put excessive uh, punctuation. So I have fixed my night bot. I hope you can chat now. I'm so sorry for the issues. I, I don't. I don't want. You know, I don't want you guys to be able to chat somewhat freely. You know, but I do have it on just blocking the few words. But uh, yeah, it's it was annoying even to me. So sorry, but. The cat hair is part of the art. Yeah, but I hate it. <laughs> no, I usually try to keep the cat hair away while it's drying. But yeah, once it dried, it gets on everything. But um, here's another one. Oh, welcome, art and crafting lady. That's another one I found just recently. So many great channels and so many great arts and crafting channels. I love it. Here's another one. And this is actually. One of my, I would say this is probably 10th one I've ever, was ever did back in 2014. This is one of, the, um, one of my very first ones I did. Is that not me? Um, question mark. What, did I miss that? What were you asked? What were you wanting to? Yeah, the Nightbot um, has a lot of different. Um, it's it's like I don't know if it's I think it's AI, but you have all these different options. You can um, keep people from posting links. You can block um, excessive emojis, excessive punctuation, and you can put in certain words to block. Um, so uh, it is helpful because um, I don't want my stream political, and unfortunately, I had a bunch of political. I think they were bots, but so I had to block a lot of those sort of words. But um, so uh, it helps keeping the stream kind of 
without those words. But when I first started the night bot, it, um, it was blocking everybody's comments. Nobody could talk because it, it was saying, you know, too many punctuation, too many emoji. So I've taken all that off. There's, there's just a, a bunch of different boxes to check. And I made it where you took a bunch of those blocks off. But um, nice colors. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, Tiki and Nika. That's awesome. Thanks for stopping by. And check everybody out. You know, of course, don't use the all the spammy words and stuff. But this one I'm going to, I think, um, I haven't decided if it needs a mermaid or a uh, sea turtle painted on it. What do you guys think? Sea turtle or mermaid? But that I definitely think this one probably, I thought about a mermaid coming down here because it kind of looks, but um, so yeah, uh, this one, because I have so many blue ones. I mean, it's, it's pretty on its own, but I just have so many similar. So I was going to paint something on top of it. Um, but, and then this one, and this one's done with um, the bottom of a bottle. And um, so most of your soda bottles will have five like little bumps on the bottom of it. So a Propel bottle, like a um, sports drink Propels, uh, they have six on the bottom of it. That's a little trick that I have, but that's what this one, and this one kind of slid kind of off weird for me. I thought we could just show you some of these so you guys don't have to, you know, have a little something to look at, you know. So I got sea turtles, sea turtle. Most people said sea turtles. Um, I actually have a couple of paintings about that same color uh, combination. So I might do one of each, honestly. Probably will eventually. Um, I actually collect turtles. So it's kind of funny. Um, I don't know if you guys can actually see, but right along here, all the top right there, those are all turtles. So um, that's kind of my thing. I collect turtles and have a lot of turtle things and stuff. So I tend to always go towards the turtle direction. So I may do a turtle first. And then I think on a different one, I, yeah, it is just a second, but um, I will probably do a mermaid on a different one. Is the hula hoop for a project. Yes, it is. I want to do a really, really large dream catcher with the hula hoop kind of um, it's going to be up above um, my headboard. It's going to be kind of part of the whole, but yeah, the hula hoop is for, um, I have to get some bigger, uh, I don't want to do hemp, but like this, I'm going to do part of it in hemp. And then I got to get this like cotton thicker yarn. But um, yeah, it is. It's actually for a art project. I'm going to do a really big dream capture. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, Dana says, awesome. Tiki, Tiki and Nika say, talented. Um, you say for do some fairies, uh, you know, my with the whimsy creek uh, art, I do a lot of whimsical stuff, a lot of fairies kind of whim whimsical houses. I do a lot of whimsical houses. Um, some of you have already seen this, but this is what I'm I've got to finish but, um, those. But uh, so, yeah, I do a lot of fairies, a lot of little whimsical houses. Um, we actually have these little guys right here. I'm going to do something with. I think I, I might glitter these up. Um, I mixed a bunch of glitters up, uh, kind of custom mixed the glitters. So I've got some really pretty iridescent glitters I might. And then put these on one. That's fine. Like this one would look really nice. Like Because I kind of want to do something with some of them. After I look at them for a while, I get bored of them and I want to jazz them up, you know, the paint pours. But uh, right here, that, that would look good with uh, her kind of maybe uh, 
glittered up. So, uh, that, not me. The 10 pressure did those okay. Yeah, that flip cup, it's right here. Here it is. Yeah, and I mean, those are just the top 10 that I chose. There are so many different techniques. So many different techniques. I might do another video like um, five bonus type, different kinds. But uh, have I ever used hobby wear? Yeah, yeah. Um, this the, it's a hula hoop, so it'd be a really big one. Um, but uh, for smaller ones, uh, especially I've done little um, dream catchers about keychain size, little tiny uh, dream catchers, and they look really nice with the hobby wire. Yeah, definitely. Um, and actually, um, that gives me an idea. I could do some small with the hobby wire maybe and put them on a painting. I'm always coming up with ideas to create, create other, do other crafts and arts and then combine them and put them on my pores. So, no, it's not a die. It was, um, it was a pack of like six of them. There was three in this pose. I think I used the other ones up, but there was two poses. There was three of them in this pose and then three of them with like sitting down. And they were, um, what brand? They were at um, my local craft store. I can't remember the brand, but. Um, yeah, I got them like that though. I don't have that die. So a uh, die. Um, so do you guys have a cricket like Diana art and crafting lady? I just got a cricket. I'm having a terrible time with vinyl. I need help with vinyl because I got the machine. So cricket, for those that don't know, it's a vinyl cutting machine, or I mean it cuts all kinds of stuff. It cuts paper, cardstock, even some really thin metals, some really thin um fabrics thin thin wood um like this chipboard it can cut and so i got this machine here that can cut do that um and i got vinyl so this is the vinyl i got and it it says well actually i got this as a gift so i didn't pick this out but it's the removable mat so I think that maybe I have the wrong type or something because when I go to adhere it to the painting, it's not sticking. So do you guys know what type of vinyl I need? I, I think I need a more permanent one because that one says removable. No cricket there on your bucket list. Yeah, um, I can imagine they're probably super expensive over there. Uh, I would have never been able to afford it. It was a gift. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that, not me. Um, at the beginning of this video, I, I had a stroke. You know, I talked to, blah, 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 blah. let me back up. The beginning of this video, I talk about the signs and symptoms of a stroke. And so that's very important. I want everybody to please watch the signs and symptoms of stroke because you can have a stroke at any age. And, you know, of course, I bring this up because of Luke Perry. I'm going to keep repeating this for the people that are still a bit in here. But um, uh, he had a stroke at 52 and died the other day. So um, please be aware of the signs and symptoms of a stroke. But I do have it at the beginning of this um, live and I will replay this. And I'm also going to put it in the description, uh, the signs and symptoms of a stroke. But uh, yeah, I had—I mean, I had mine at 25. So um, you got into a car accident. How how recent? How long ago was this car accident? And usually, something like that does not. Um, it'll maybe cause more of um, aneurysms and things like that. But. Yeah, I have no room for the cricket, but I made room. I mean, it was given to me, so I had to make room. They're so expensive. But, uh, yes, yeah, so sad to hear Luke Perry died. I it was super sad. That was my first celebrity crush. I watched 90210. But that, not me. How long ago was this accident? Uh, it's terrible to hear. But, um. So you guys, neither one of you have a cricket. So uh, I got to find somebody with a cricket that I need to ask this vinyl question. Because what I want to do is some of these, I would love to 
cut out like a fairy or um, a quote and vinyl a quote on here. Uh, that was kind of my main uh, reason for wanting the uh, Cricut machine, but I'm, I'm using the wrong kind of vinyl or something. So you had 16 staples in your head? It's been two years now. Oh, they told you you're, okay, so there's two different types of strokes. There's the hemorrhagic stroke, which is bleeding in the brain. And then there's the ischemic stroke. And that is a clotting um, in the brain. Uh, so that would be a di the different type of strokes than what I had. I had the clotting because I have a clotting disorder. I really don't know much about hemorrhagic strokes, really, honestly. Can they come? I thought they were something that like, Suddenly, I, can they come on over years? I'm not sure. Yeah, because I um, I had the clotting, the ice, ischemic stroke, which is a clotting stroke. Um, both times I had the strokes, so I know a lot more about those. But um, a hemorrhagic stroke is what more of what you're talking about. Oh, okay. So here's another one. Uh, how old were you, Tiki, Tiki and Mika? Um, during surgery, I had, okay, so first one was I was driving. Second one was like minutes after surgery. And um, so, so um, how long ago was that? And how old? Mika, okay. I wasn't sure which one of you were here. Um. So that's very interesting. So many people have come in here and said, yes, I had a stroke. I had a stroke. Uh, so um, that's just crazy. All right, um, UFO Builder Tim, I'm going to remember that. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I hope you can make it maybe Tuesday or um, I'm going to do my new live on Tuesday with trivia or next Thursday or I'll see you around. So, But thank you for stopping by. Have a great day. But um, Numbness on the side of face. And, okay, so I'll go through it real quick for the people that weren't in here. So my face went completely numb. One of the best ways is to have somebody try to smile. They The one side of their face won't go up. One of the other ways is for the people that were in here, I'm sorry, you're going to hear this again, but it's so important. I'm sorry. I'm going to repeat it. Another way is uh, try to raise their eyebrows. If, if they can't raise their eyebrows at the same time, one doesn't raise, that's another clue. Slurred speech, uh, arm weakness, raising their, have them raise both arms up in front of them. And if one doesn't go up at the same time, that's another sign of a stroke. So what it is, is fast face, those facial, the smiling, the eyebrows, A, arms, S, speech, T for time, call. If the first three, are there any signs of it? Call immediately. You got to get a stroke victim help immediately. So those are the, you know, fast is the thing. F-A-S-T, face, arm, speech, time. So I went through it at the beginning of this too. But Nika, um, I didn't get, what. how old were you How when this happened? How long ago would, did this happen? I was in a wheelchair for, um, after my first stroke for quite a while. Um, so my art, the way my left side was my affected side, I had complete left-sided weakness. And I, this is how I taught myself to use my left side again, is moving this around, moving this around. So um, that's why it's so important for me to talk about this is, you know, that's all about my channel is the art. And I want people to know, you know, this is how I learned this art is I had a stroke. But yeah. And of course, because Luke Perry, it, it brings it to light. And I, I want to talk about it because that. But here's another one. So you're still in the wheelchair now from 09. Okay, so yeah. Um, I, I, I understand how that is. That's, that's difficult. Uh, I hope, you know, there's a lot of so much uh, technology coming out there. I hope that it gets easier for you and you're able to, you know, kind of see the positive in it. Because, I mean, everything has a positive. But, 
the rights way. Hey, thank you for stopping by. That's awesome. Um, how am I doing now? Um, I'm doing okay as long as we keep an eye on my blood work and don't let my platelets get out of control. Um, I have had a couple of rounds of really, really low dose chemo to keep me at a proper level to not have keep having strokes, but uh, I'm doing pretty good. I don't have too many deficits except for um, if I'm really, really stressed out or if I have a lot going on, um, I can, I kind of like, um, I, my foot just won't move quite as fast as the other one, but it definitely, um, it's mainly more stress. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for stopping by and check everybody else out. Uh, you might have some of the other, uh, yeah, miracle, um, you never know, but, uh, also just, um, kind of the technologies to make it more easier, I think. I mean, I have a friend that's a quadriplegic and, uh, she kind of talks about some of the things that come out that are just more adaptive for her and kind of just help her make life a little easier stuff. So that's kind of nice, you know, that things like that are coming out, but. Yeah, let's not get stressed. Um, I don't know. And then sometimes if you can kind of tell, I'll get talk, 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 and, and my mind will go quicker and I'll kind of have a little bit of a stutter. After the stroke, I had a more pronounced um, speech impediment. But you can kind of, I pick up on it probably more than other people do. Oh, the Friendly Junk Journal Facebook group. Okay, I will. Cool. Thanks for letting me know. But yeah. But this is another one, sorry. So this one was done. I did this on a video the other day. It's all dry, this is how it dried. Uh, this was done with the blown, I put the colors in the middle and then I just blew it. Oops, sorry. And then, which ones have I not shown? Because I have a whole pile next to me. This was a really cool one I really liked doing. Um, yes, definitely, Mika. Definite prayers for you, for sure. That's really nice, Sugar's Delight. I love that name, Sugar's. <laughs> Thank you, The Rights Way. Yeah, prayers for everyone, definitely. You never know what somebody's going through. You never know what um, somebody's, be, you know. And that's what I always try to keep in mind. You definitely, you never know. They might put on a good front. You have no idea what people are really going through. Um, I think a little of both. Art and Crafting Lady brought up a good question. Don't you think there are more and more illnesses these days or is people more open about it? I think people are definitely more open about it. We have different platforms like this where we can talk about it. Um, I think that, uh, you know, YouTube and all the social media, it's definitely, definitely a, an awareness out there about it. But then at the same time, yeah, I think there's definitely, I mean, there's definitely an uptick in younger people having strokes. I don't think we ever heard of the amount of young people having strokes like now. Um, so uh, I think it's a little off both. I think people are definitely talking about it. And um, yeah. We have a definite more and more, uh, especially like cancers. I, cancers are obviously happening more. There's certain things that, yeah, unfortunately. And unfortunately, um, like, okay, mine is Jack 2 mutation and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. I um, 
there's not very much research there because in the early 2000s is when the Jack or late ni- 90s, early 2000s is when they discovered the Jack 2 mutation. So there's not much they know about it, but they're starting to wonder if it was like things like Agent Orange and different things. They, I mean, they don't know yet, but they are doing studies on it. And so, I mean, is it the pesticides? Is it the Agent Orange? Is it the stuff that people are um, having to come across while in war and um, the pesticides we have here and the stuff we have in our processed foods? And I don't know. I don't know, but you sure wonder, you know, we do um, have a lot more of that anymore, a lot more um, preservatives and pesticides. So. Maybe, maybe that's what's happening. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I try to eat as clean as possible though, because you never know. So here's that other one. I was showing you, here, I'll show you. So I had this one and I asked about a sea turtle or a mermaid. So I have this one also. So one will probably get a sea turtle and one will probably get a mermaid. I just haven't decided which one. This one will probably get the mermaid and this one will probably get the sea turtle, honestly. But So um, those are two that I will paint um, a little bit onto just to kind of jazz them up a little more. But what do you guys think? What I mean, that's a great question that uh, was asked. Are people talking about their illnesses more and more? Or is it happening more and more? What do you guys think? Yeah. um, A virus. See, I mean, viruses that used to, you never heard of these viruses. Like Art and Crafting Lady talks about, you know, that's seven years ago. And still affecting her quite, you know, extremely. You did not, you didn't hear about that quite. So, I mean, every once in a while, but most people, most of these viruses didn't um, mutate into these more huger issues. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm new on YouTube and um, a lot of my problem was I didn't want to tell my story. I don't want people to be like, I don't want sympathy. I do not want people to feel sorry for me or sympathy because I don't feel sorry for myself. And I don't, you know, I went through that morning of, because I was very healthy, had no health issues one day and woke up the next day with a stroke. So my life changed with a blink. And so I've already gone through that kind of mourning my old life. And this is the way I am now. And I don't want people to feel sorry for me. So that was a lot of why I was hesitant to tell my story on um, YouTube or tell my story really out there on social media because I don't want sympathy. I want my whole purpose is awareness. I'm sharing my story of a stroke and sharing the signs and symptoms of the stroke because I want people to be aware that young people have strokes. It can, you can have a stroke at 25. That's actually kind of a little bit more becoming more common, you know, more and more every day. So um, yeah, I'm finding more and more people on this platform that um, similar stories, similar situations. And uh, it's crazy to realize how many people are going through um, Something somewhat similar, but, you know, different in their own way, too. Yeah, I mean, I'm a fighter. I fought through that. I, I um, you, Your life definitely changes in the blink of the eye. And, yeah, I went through a stage where it, I felt bad for myself. I couldn't believe, why me? Why me? But you quickly, you have to just quickly kind of, you know, okay. Things are different. Things, this is how I'll do it now type thing. And I mean, luckily with my, with me, I was able to find the art. Um, I did uh, kind of do arts and crafts. I painted a little, 
before that. I kind of dabbled in um, mainly paper crafts and things like that. But uh, I found the paint pouring after the stroke. And that is where I really dove in. So I've been doing that since 2014, doing the paint pouring. Kind of before it came, became super popular everywhere. Because I watched it suddenly, like, all over YouTube and stuff. So, yeah. How is everyone doing today, though? You guys having a good day? Hi, uh, Miss Meesey. Uh, welcome. Thank you for stopping in. All right, Robert. Thanks for, uh, I didn't realize you were still here. Thanks for, you know, sticking around for so long. Uh, I'll be doing 90s trivia next Tuesday. That should be fun. Uh, stop in if you're not doing anything. It'll be 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. But uh, everybody, if you um, want to check out my friend Robert, he uh, does a weather report out of Colorado. Just a nice short uh to the point video every morning out of Colorado and shows the weather. But um, he's a great friend, a great supporter too. So thanks for coming and give Liberty a big old hug for me. All right. But yeah. If you guys want to check out Robert, he's a great friend. I've been chatting with him for well, going on almost a year actually. So yeah. And H7, another great friend. He's my tech friend. When I ever have any questions, I ask him. H7 Apollo. He's he's pretty good with all the computer tech type stuff. Which I am gonna H7. Um, I want to do the OBS soon. So I have a bunch of OBS questions. So I'm gonna connect with you. Um, maybe this weekend I'll send you a message on Facebook. I got some OBS questions, H7. So, yeah, I'll send – you could help me out with a couple questions. Nika, awesome. I'm so glad you're still here. Uh, I'm so happy everybody's sticking around and hanging out with me. And then I often – okay, so before I start my lives – I have my little notebook and I write all my little ideas of all the things I'm going to talk about because I always think I'm so boring. I want to do art in front of you guys, not talk because I'm boring. And I work from home, so like I never have people to talk to. So it's like I feel like I'm talk, talk, talking too much. <laughs> not talk so much. Anybody have any exciting plans for this weekend? Anybody do anything fun this weekend? I don't have too much, too much exciting planned. I think I'm going to go up to the uh, Goodwill. I like to go to the Goodwill here has the bins where you buy it per a pound. And so I'm going to do a trip to the Goodwill this weekend. That's the uh, second hand store. Art and Crafting Lady, thank you so much for stopping by. And you have a great night. And this Irish girl loves that somebody from Ireland stopped in. So uh, I'm really excited to um, get to know all these fun, new, artsy, crafty people. That's my tribe. I love it. Yeah, definitely, Diana. Um, Diana, I'm on... Uh, Facebook, it's just my uh, Whimsy Creek Art. If you're on Facebook, you can add me. But um, so you're going to relax to the max H7. That sounds like a great weekend. That's awesome. Um, yeah, OBS is um, kind of confusing. I've downloaded it and I'm just trying to figure out a couple of things on it. But um, once I figure it out, I'll let you know, Diana. But uh, it might take me a while. I'm not very tech. This takes me a while to figure all this out. You're going to go bicycle riding, not me. That's awesome. That's a great weekend, too. I'm just waiting for the uh, northwest rains to dry up and not have, you know, as we can get out and get back out camping and hiking and stuff. We do a lot in the spring and summer um, outdoors, but 
not so much this time of the year. It's just really hard with all the rain. We do have that all, but just maybe shorter little trips to the park and stuff. So awesome. Awesome. Everybody's got some great plans this weekend. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go. My next big sale for the art is in April. And I actually um, rented a double space. So since I will be having two spaces, I need to go get, um, I'm hoping to find some end tables and some stools and some small little chairs or desks that I can pour on the top of or to use my pour painting to redo some just some small furniture items. Since my space at my next um, art sale is going to be so large, I thought I'd fill it with a couple of furniture items. So Nika's going to go uh, celebrating your grandma's 86th birthday. That is so special. Um, my grandma was my best friend. So um, I just I love older people and I love just spending time with them and just soaking up their wisdom and stuff. So that's awesome. I hope you have a great time. Elf Lord's Journey. It's awesome. Stopping in. Thank you so much. and Welcome. Another great artist. Uh, I love his, uh, the uh, Watercolor Wednesdays. And uh, I'm very talented. I love checking out your sketchbook tours of all your watercolors. So, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Some great people in here. I'm so excited. So, yeah, it's um, I've been going to all these, um, I guess you call them networking streams, but it's somewhat new to me. And I've met quite a few of you guys in those networking streams. A uh, yeah, lot of great ones. Like um, uh, Farmall Fanatic is one that's really a great one. Farmall Fanatic goes on live on Friday nights, uh, 7.30 uh, Eastern time. So it's 4.30 uh, on the Pacific coast for Pacific time. But tomorrow night, Farm All Fanatic, his stream is amazing for networking. But just remember, you know, of course, when you go in these streams to don't say, you know, spam words. And they consider spam words, you know, if you say in a chat, subscribe, sub, I support you, you know. So um, a lot of these networking streams have different rules. And so I've kind of gotten confused, you know, in one stream, they want you to do only emojis. In one stream, they want no emojis. So I've been doing it a lot just behind the scenes. If I see people I like, I don't announce in the stream because I'm not sure, you know, that chat host rule, you have to put this or that. So I've actually been just um, behind the scenes going and finding their videos, seeing if I like them, watching a video, commenting, subscribing. But I haven't really been posting in the chat like, I got you, I rang your bell, all the little codes, because I can't keep track of each, each streamer has their own roles. So it's kind of silly. Um, but uh, artfully, or Diana, she says that she goes to Pusa Studios. That's another one. Pusa Studios is um, a great couple. They're really animated. I love their kind of back and forth. They have a little tease in each other. But um, what also is really nice with Pusa Studios is they have um, kind of a little game they get and they spin a wheel. And if you're chosen, they will go and they will shout out your uh, channel name, but they will also uh, critique your channel. So even if your channel isn't the one chosen to get a critique, I listen through the critiques because there's a lot of tips that are good for anybody's channel. It doesn't have to be, you know, the different um, tips and tricks they have aren't just for that channel. The tips and tricks can really, you know, I listen to all the different critiques on the channels because I'm really learn a lot, you know, on different things that they say to do. And um, like, for instance, I just learned this week on your playlists. Did you know you can put a description under each playlist? And so that can be searchable. So I'm, I'm trying to add descriptions under each of my playlists. And I learned that over at Pusa Studios. So two family homestead, home, blah, blah, blah. two family homestead has another one. Um, theirs is on Tuesdays. And then there's always the BNO Outdoors, um, 
Deer Park Farmstead. Oh, Val and Coco. Uh, Val and Coco, they're a great, she's a great stream. Um, many prayers to her today. Uh, I was on her stream last night and she got a call of a death in the family. So many, many prayers to Val today, but uh, Val and Coco is a great one to go to. Very great support in there. Um, in Disa's world, in D-I-S-A, in Disa's world, she's another sh shout out one. But I've been kind of sticking to the ones like Pusa Studios and stuff that is not just a networking stream. You're also learning a ton. They're talking about tips and tricks during it. So that's been kind of nice too. But um, yeah, that, not me. Um, that's what's cool about YouTube. There's so much to learn on YouTube. But I mean, not even just, uh, I mean, when we fixed the car recently, we looked up a YouTube video. So uh, there's so much to learn on YouTube about doing YouTube and being a creator on YouTube. But then also for those that aren't, you know, looking to create just the viewers, there's so much on YouTube. Yeah, you learned that they were talking about the uh, playlist, the descriptions and the descriptions of a playlist. Yeah, I didn't realize that until they said that. So, I mean, there's so much to learn. But uh, and then I've, I've found people, you know, in these different ones that. Uh, I um, sorry, total brain fart. I don't even know what I was going to say. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm usually pretty good about keeping my thoughts. <laughs> But yeah, um, I think I've mentioned everybody. Uh, Pusa, Pusa Studios, uh, Farm All Fanatics. Farm All Fanatics is fast. It goes fast, fast, fast. Uh, oh, I haven't heard of those ones. Yeah, not me. Um, like, what are those? I'm going to write those ones down because I bet you those are something that I would be into. I'll have to write that down. I haven't heard of those ones. And I love um, a lot of the educational stuff I will play in the background while I'm painting. And and also some of your guys' chats. I might be in your chat and just listening and playing it in the background. But um, I'm painting so my hands are all painted and I can't really chat. But, um, oh, yes, I cannot forget that. Green Bay Wackies. Um, I'm new to him just this week. But uh, he's hilarious. So yeah, yeah, this is a good one. Oh, and then another one um, I'm new to this week that um, is a real peaceful, real mellow stream is Cab7, C-A-B-7. His is a really good stream too. But I gotta write these ones down from Dat. Um, so Dat, not me, do you think those are good for me to just listen to while I paint? All right, I'll write those down. Um, but uh, so yeah, there's so many great people out there. And I love finding new artists and new crafty people and, and then other ones too. I mean, not just artists, crafty people. I feel it's just found some amazing people. Uh, some, I just love it. Okay, cool. I'll check that out. But yeah. But that's my only, um, I would say, uh, complaint about going in these streams is a lot of them have rules and they have rules of what you want to post. And um, it's hard to keep track of everybody's rules. And sometimes they're changing because YouTube's constantly changing their rules. And I, I understand why they have these rules. The, the purpose is. Um, because they don't want to be, you know, caught. YouTube's algorithm will catch on if there's constantly people saying, I sub you, I subscribe to you. If that's just, you know, you got to have an actual conversation and chat going. Um, if that's all that's in the chat is I sub you, I sub you, I sub you. Um, that will catch on to YouTube and you will be marked a spam channel. So I get why you have these rules, but it's just very... Um, kind of confusing and I don't I don't want to get in trouble in base chat or be you know labeled spam person and put the wrong thing so I've been just doing it behind the scenes I'll be in there and I'll be conversating and if I see people I like I just go and I don't announce it in the chat 
that's just the way I've been kind of doing it. Um, or I write down a few of the channel names I want to check out afterwards, and then I go check them out after the chat. But yeah. All right. Let me set these paintings back down my big old toppling tower. And because I don't like them to sit on top of each other like this, because they will start poking. Um, they just, they, they kind of stick to each other too. So get these moved. And then, um, so what are you guys' um, favorite book? Let's talk about that. You guys read? What's your favorite book? Or what are you currently reading? Favorite book or what are you currently reading? Oh, I didn't read that fast enough. That not me. What did you post? Eve Harvey. No, that's another one I've not heard of. Is that what you're reading? Um, is that your favorite book or what you're currently reading, H7? So what I'm currently reading, I'm always currently reading a couple of books, actually. I just picked these up the other day at Goodwill, um, and I'm super excited. But I got The Artist's Way. But um, so this is The Artist's Way. And then I did find the companion workbook. So that was super exciting little find there. So I haven't started it yet, but I've been on the lookout for this for a couple of years. So I am super excited to, um, to read this one. That one's going to be great. Oh, okay. That's great. I'll have to check that out. Um, I'll write that one down too. Great suggestions. Awesome, guys. This prudent gal. Awesome. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome. We were talking about um, a little bit about, uh, I asked, what is your favorite book? Favorite book or author? Or what are you currently reading? What is, what's, you know, on your bookshelf right now? So. Well, if, if it's in Greek, I can always have my father-in-law read anything in Greek. <laughs> Tell me, translate it for me. <laughs> All right. What's I writing down? Oh, yeah. Should write down. But yeah, that's what I'm reading, right? Or getting ready to read is The Artist's Way. Uh, but uh, I've actually wrote a couple of books. Um, nothing published. Absolutely nothing published. I probably will never let other people read. But I love to write. I, I do write. Um, have you guys ever heard of uh, NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month? It's the month of November. And so I usually do the month, month of November, you try to write a 50,000 word uh, book during the month. And so I have participated in the last couple NaNoWriMo's. Now, um, the last couple I was uh, doing a lot of the uh, painting and stuff. So I did not complete my 50,000 word book. But in 2014, in the month of November, or 2015, I think. I, yeah, I think it's 2015. The month of November, I did write a 50,000 50, word book. Oh, Diana, you need um, audio. Okay, do you have any audio books that you're enjoying? You're watching NCIS. Ooh, that's my show, but they've changed all of the characters. Uh, all of the good ones are gone. So, yeah, I watch the NCIS too. So, I love all those types of shows. But, uh, uh, yeah, what was I saying? Right? Oh, Nano Rimo. Um, now the sun came back out. Oh, close the, the blinds a bit. But, uh, so yeah, um, and I tend to stick with like, um, I really like historical fiction or I really like, um, like dystopic. And so for the books, the, the things that I tend to write are very dystopic, kind of dystopic mixed with historical fiction, which I know is kind of an opposite, but I kind of made it work in the one I did. Um, 
no TV for 25 years. Um, yeah, we, um, we don't watch much TV here. We have, um, we don't have cable or anything. We have Netflix and Hulu. So if it's on Netflix or Hulu, I've probably seen it. But other than that, um, nope. But you do like your threes company. That's awesome. That was a great show. I wish they would show that in some, I haven't found that on, um, uh, any of the, uh, Hulu or anything, but, um, oh gosh, what was his name? The actor. He was amazing. I loved him. He's dead now, but what is the actor on three's company? I don't know why I can't think of it. That's a great show though. But, um, Elf Lord's Journey, uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, you know, I kind of could guess that for you. Um, I actually just recently, I've read it before, but I picked it up at a thrift store, the companion to the Lord of the Rings series. Um, so I'm going to read that soon. You like the ropers on there? This pretty, yeah, the ropers were pretty funny. <laughs> the neighbors. And from Amazon Prime, uh, rather than audiobooks, it just depends. I'll, I'll listen to audiobooks a lot. You know, lately it's been listening to YouTubers, but um, before I listen to quite a few audiobooks, if I'm painting. Um, if I'm not painting, you know, and I'm actually watching it, then um, we don't have Amazon Prime right now. But I did see that Amazon Prime uh, did put uh, all the seasons of Little House on the Prairie, um, which I, I've i read Little House on the Prairie series several times. But um, the show's okay. I mean, the show's very different than the books, but um, on a total different, I don't, they're not the same, but um the show is very good. Little House on the Prairie is on uh, uh, Amazon Prime. They just added it yesterday, I read. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, not me. Yeah, The Three's Company was an awesome show. Kim Basinger's mom was Mrs. Roper. I never knew. I, don't, I didn't know that. Wow. Okay. See, that's awesome. Um, that like 70s music rules. Oh, yeah. Um, so you watch NCIS? Have you watched like Criminal Minds? Criminal Minds is another good one that's pretty similar. Um, but I NCIS isn't the same. They took off my all my favorite characters, so but so, Diana, who is your favorite character on NCIS? Just dated yourself. That's okay. I do it all the time. But, but I'm an 80s kid, so. That's why next week we're going to do trivia and we'll do nine or that's short, right? 90s trivia. So that should be fun. I don't know these little 90s trivia. I got them at the Dollar Tree. So they should be all right. They're just little cards. They're with a little bit 90s trivia on it. We'll see how it is. And then if that doesn't work, I am going to start doing trivia Tuesday. So then if that doesn't work, hopefully I'll pull out the Trivial Pursuit. <laughs> we'll do that. That light has gotten bright all of a sudden. There. I had to open it a little bit ago for the glare on my glasses, but now it's. Yeah, I mean, that's, I have no problem with, uh, I don't care about any of that, not, not me. Yep, that's fine. Uh. Well, yeah, but so yeah, uh, that's what I'm going to do this weekend is try to pick up some furniture and hopefully get some furniture painted in my um, technique that I do, the paint pouring. But how, have you guys been watching the mystery pour videos? 
uh, the most recent mystery pour, I think maybe even the most recent two, maybe just the last one, I um, did it with the phone app. It's called a Decision Roulette. And I'm picking the colors through that. But um, maybe I thought about starting to just use the Decision Roulette. I wanted to just do the colors for now and just see how it works. But I was thinking about doing, because um, I can add a lot more techniques than, you know, for the dice, I just have six techniques. And as you can see on my video on Tuesday, a lot more techniques. So I think I'm going to start using the phone app to pull the decision roulette to do what I'm going to do for a technique and what the base color and the, the colors all use. So that should be fun. Um, have you guys been checking those out? What do you guys think of those? I think they're super fun because like it's making me think of colors uh, combinations like yesterday's. I would have never put the yellow ochre, the um, gray, the purple, and there's a fourth color it's right here. Oh, it was berry wine. I would have never put those colors together, especially with the gray as a background, but those were randomly chosen. And so it turned out all right though. And so, um, John Ritter, that's who I was trying to think of, yes. But, uh, but yeah, I don't care who loves who or what, if they're trans transgendered or if they're men or women, that's fine. But yeah, John Ritter, I don't know why I couldn't think of his name. I loved him. He was very, very good actor. And I don't care about his personal, you know, that's, that's his business. But the brand name to my acrylics. Um, I do have a couple of videos where I, um, I think my paint mixing video, I go over like all the brand names I use and stuff. But um. The number one is um, this one here. I use uh, this cheap paint. Uh, this cheap paint is multi-surface, and it's a very latexy, plasticky. For the paint pouring, it works really well, and um, it it stays the separate because they don't mix and make mud. The cat hair. Um, but yeah, it's called cheap paint. Now, one thing that's kind of funny with this one, I always thought it was funny. I never knew there was a town in Pennsylvania called, but look where this is, uh, made in. It was made in China, but it's distributed by, from Bird in Hand, Pennsylvania. I didn't know there was a place in Pennsylvania called Bird in Hand. And I think it's great that they distribute the cheap paint at Bird in Hand. Um, you know, honestly, I don't know. This doesn't say soft body or heavy body. I, I would be, honestly, if you compare it to like Liquitex, it's kind of in between. It's, it's kind of more a heavy body, but, um, it, it doesn't say if it's soft body or heavy body, this brand, but comparing to Liquitex, that Liquitex is the other brand I use a lot. So to kind of compare it to that one, and that one's the one that most people use. I would say cheap paint is more of a heavy body, but not quite as um, thick as um, Liquitex. It's 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 kind of a soft body too. It, it's different. But how much for that size tube? Um, well, I get a discount because I get it in um, really large quantities. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon. I did look it up on Amazon. I feel like it's kind of spendy on Amazon, but, um, I buy it in large quantities. So I get it for like $3 a tube about. Um, and I think that, does any of these have a price tag? No, I don't think these ones got priced because I buy them in the case. But I think that they have a four ninety seven price. I've seen a four ninety seven price tag on them um, before, but it's a four ounce, so it's a good size tube. But another one that's a good one, um, the Deco Art Americana. They just came out. Well, not just, probably almost a year ago, they came out with their premium brands. I really like those too, and they're kind of a heavier body. 
Um, but they're on the cheaper range of uh, nice paint. So I really like those too. But And you can use the Americana, um, not the premium, but just the Americana and like the craft tubes. You can use those a lot too. But I use a lot of different types of paint. And it really depends. I've learned, you know, like certain golds work better for me. But yeah. Drummer family. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Awesome. Uh, and happy late birthday. I was in your stream the other night on uh, Maria's birthday. But uh, I'll go ahead and say happy late birthday again to you as well. So. You buy most of your stuff through Jerry's Artorama. Um, uh, I have a Jerry's catalog I was dreaming and looking through. But um, I actually have never, we don't, are they a stand? I don't know. Are they brick and mortar store? But I only have the catalog and I've never ordered from, but I'm looking for it. Yeah, Intercourse, Pennsylvania. It's in Amish country. I know. <laughs> Those Pennsylvanians have some funny named towns, but that's a good one. <laughs> but Jerry's Artorama. I know I need to make an order. I've been dreaming in their catalog. But uh yeah, I try to just every time I sell something on Etsy, turn around and put it into the paint and stuff. So I sell a few more things on Etsy and then I'm gonna get a webcam. That's my plan. Blix and Cheap Joe's. Um, I go to Michael's and Michael's um because Michael's has good coupons and Michael's um, online has a lot more than what Michael's um, in the store has, um, at least for my Michael's, uh, but online they have so much more uh, and use your coupons, learn to stack those coupons and use those coupons. But um, on michaels.com, you can find a lot more art supplies. So that's where I buy a lot of mine. Um, and then my cheap paint is bought from a local craft store. I kind of have uh, going with them. Oh, I got my first um, sponsor, guys. Let me, I'm going to grab something real quick. Okay. So, you know, I mix my paint with a pouring medium. And I have always used, I use um, one part paint one part Liquitex pouring medium, and then two parts Floetrol. But um, so I was given this catch a tryout to replace my Floetrol and to see if this works for me. They want to see, because this Floetrol is made mainly for um, house painters, painters that are going to, you know, the big, they're doing exterior paint, um, maybe spray jobs or something. Uh, so it's in a paint extender. Uh, so this one they gave me, um, uh, this is an additive or paint extender to replace the Floetrol and see if this works better for me. But this is my first sponsored product, and I will be doing a video probably next week, I think, is the video um, of a review of how this works instead of the Floetrol for paint pouring. So that was quite exciting to have um, some products given to me. So yeah. We don't have a Hobby Lobby here too. Um, I'm I'm constantly seeing people post uh paints that they've bought on Hobby Lobby's clearance. And I am just jealous of some of the deals we get. So I live in the northwest of the United States. And so our main ones are um Blick. We have Blick. We have, you know, Michael's Crafts and Joanne's. Um, but we mainly have like little private, um, not really corporate um, for art supplies and not so much the craft supplies. But if you're really looking for some art supplies, we mainly have like little um, just private people I like to support, uh, small little family businesses. Or else um, if I was really looking for something specialized, I maybe would go over to Portland, Oregon. And Portland, Oregon has a few of the bigger um, art supply stores. But I get a lot of mine um, just locally from just small little people or um, uh, online, uh, Amazon, Michaels, those sort of things. So. Do I know the Muffin Man? 
uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to answer there. Uh, welcome, though. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, but, yeah, I'm really excited to do that video. And, I mean, it may not. Some things you try to mix with the paint, it just doesn't mix well. And, uh, you know, I use all acrylic paint. So I'm super excited to see if this will work and if I have a new sponsor, a new product to keep trying to use. So we'll see. I haven't actually, um, I just got the bottle and I haven't used it yet. But yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like you're trying to make me say something that. I think just sponsored right now. Um, they're wanting to see how this works because it's made for a house painter. And so the company just reached out and asked me to just kind of do some testing of it to see if it's something that is going to work um, in an art of doing the pouring. So um, I, I guess maybe it could turn into affiliate if it works, you know, if it worked a really good product. So we're just going to have to see. Oh, um, that's Rick Cheadle. Um, I bet you is who you're talking about. Rick Cheadle does the pours um, under $10. Okay. He's amazing. He has amazing techniques. But I feel like that's a little bit misleading. I think doing the pours, the, the under $10, he uses glue um, as the pouring medium. And um, I think that's a great way to start and to learn and to learn color theory and learn what colors are mixing well and the density and stuff like that. But um, the only problem with glue is it will yellow after a couple of years. Um, I don't really know what this logical lemon um, is talking about. Lots of random questions. I'm just kind of kind of ignore it and hopefully he'll just get bored of it. I don't know. I don't Maybe there's a meaning to the questions. I'm not sure. But uh, I do have a couple of moderators. They happen to be uh, busy right now. Uh, one happens to be in the other room. Just a moment. Mike. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah. Uh, can you help me here? Yeah. What do I do with logical room and just let them be? Uh, I mean, it's not bad stuff. So I don't know. <laughs> I'll just let you have your moment. But, uh, so yeah, uh, thanks though, guys. Uh, thanks, Passion for Pets. Have you been here lurking or did you just come in? Uh, thanks for stopping by though. Uh, but yeah, I do a regular live every uh, Thursday at 11. So I will be getting off here, here probably in about 10, 15 minutes. But um, that totally threw me off. What was I even saying? Uh, but yeah. Oh, yes, uh, the glue. I remember Elf Lord's Journey. Um, yeah, um, I think that's Rick Cheadle, uh, who you're talking about. And he he does amazing pours. But that particular one with the, or he has a couple of videos out um, that's doing it with Dollar Tree stuff uh, under $10, which I use a ton of stuff from Dollar Tree. But I use like the stir sticks. I get my squeeze bottles and stuff. Um, now he does the whole pour with Dollar Tree stuff. The paint at the, that my Dollar Tree had did not work for me. I tried to use it. It um, it kind of like separated from the canvas afterwards. It came, it was not one with the canvas. And then glue um, will yellow after time. So I started in 2014. The first few I did were with glue. And unfortunately, they have yellowed. And um, I live in the Northwest, which is super, super humid climate. And so they even got tacky, even with, I had a sealant over them. They still kind of have a, they never got hard. They never, so I don't suggest using glue. I mean, it is a great way to start and to kind of learn how to paint pour, but I don't suggest like if you're wanting to sell your art or something, it's not archival after that if you've used glue. So I try not to, you know, I don't, I don't use glue anymore, but I did begin that way. Um, you've been here lurking here at work. Well, awesome. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. Definitely. 
But yeah, uh, there's lots of things you can use as pouring mediums. And so that's just the, the recipe I use is Liquitex pouring medium, the flow trawl and the paint and a tad bit of water if I need. Sometimes I don't even need water. But there's lots of different recipes people use. Oh, El Florence Journey, time to get back. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks for stopping by. And uh, I love your art. And thank you for sharing your art with us and everything. So thanks for coming. But yeah. Uh, it's, see, I'm almost out of my water. Usually when I'm out of my cup of water, I know that's been about my two out two to, you know, a little over two hours and I'm almost done with my. And that kind of shows me where I need to. But yeah, I'll probably be on here another 10 minutes, but that's about it. For the people that came in late, uh, didn't um, the beginning of this, I talk about when I had my stroke and the signs and symptoms of stroke. So super, super important. Uh, this will be in, uh, you can see the replay. And then also um, I'll put in the description, the signs and symptoms of a stroke. For those that want to just look back, because that's super important. And I want everybody to know to look for out for a stroke. That, yeah. Um, I don't know. What else should we talk about? We're about out of everything I wanted to talk about. Anybody have any questions for me? Because that's probably where I'll end. If anybody has any questions, I'll answer any questions. And then I'll probably be getting off here pretty soon. Um, and I did want to mention the next giveaway will be coming up um, when I get to 777 subscribers. I like that number. So I think we'll just do 777 subscribers. I'll give my next giveaway. And I'm kind of thinking about giving one or two paintings away. So, yeah. No questions, guys? All right. If nobody has any questions, I'm probably just going to go ahead and get off of here. But I really appreciate everyone that has stopped in. And I love all the chatting and getting to know everybody. And uh, I hope you guys all know the signs and symptoms of a stroke now. But um, yeah, it doesn't look like anybody has any questions. I always forget the delay. So I always try to give you a moment just in case. But if you guys do think of any other questions, you know, after the stream has ended, uh, you can message me on here. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. But if you know how to message. I know how to check them. So you can message me on here. Or um, I am on Instagram and I am on Facebook. And those links are, they're on my my channel. So, or they're just Whimsy Creek Art. It's not that hard to find. But um, I really appreciate you all. And I appreciate you all stopping by. And I hope you guys can come back next Tuesday at 11 Pacific Standard Time. I will be doing Trivia Tuesday. And we can do some networking during the trivia and kind of get to know each other and check out each other's channel while we're doing a little trivia. So I hope you guys all have a great weekend, a uh, great rest of your week. And I'm sure I'll see you guys around in some of your streams or on your own channels. And I really appreciate everybody that has hung out with me and stopped by. All right, you guys have a great day. Thank you and much love everyone.